Welcome to the Marketing Automation Hustle Podcast, where we break down the essential strategies of email marketing and automation to help e-commerce brands hyper-personalize their customer journey and increase sales on autopilot. So get ready to automate your marketing like a pro with Sendlane's brand marketing manager and your host, Caitlin Hutchinson. Listeners, welcome back to the Marketing Automation Hustle podcast. Thanks for tuning in for another fully remote episode. If you were with us last time on the previous episode, we chatted a little bit about the current pandemic and how it's affected e-commerce as well as consumer trends as a whole. And we wanted to kind of continue on that same topic and do a little bit of a series that will give you some insight into what's going on and how things are evolving, as well as provide you with some actionable tips that you can take and apply to your current strategy to make sure that you're set up for success. So with that, let me welcome my guests. Okay, so today I have with me Jimmy, who's our CEO, and Amir, who is our strategic partner manager. Hey guys. Hey guys. Welcome back. Hey. So we, after we did our last episode, t- kind of talking about COVID and its effect on just uh, consumer trends and things, we've seen a lot of different topics come up. It's still changing a lot of things in the e-commerce world, and it's really top of mind for everybody. So we just wanted to kind of start a series where we're just chatting about different things along the way since we're still all at home. It's been four months now so still here i think four months i think five yeah five Five months months. we're coming into five we're one week away from five yeah at this rate it feels like christmas is like next week so um yeah we're gonna just make this a series and kind of talk through the the different ways that the e-commerce world is evolving and its effect on retailers as well and kind of how that works out great for e-commerce brands. Um, And yeah, so we're gonna kick it off today talking a little bit about just the overall effect that this whole coronavirus pandemic has had, is going to have, I should say, on holiday shopping as people are already preparing their stores, whether it's retail or online, everybody's prepping for that. Um, Jimmy actually shared an article with us earlier this week that kind of sparked this topic just uh, believe it was Target and Walmart that aren't doing um, shopping on Thanksgiving Day. They're closing their store entirely. So that's crazy. Yeah, I I mean, I was blown away. I mean, just thinking about that, you know, realizing that it's a a, a, a true American tradition to go and uh, plow into stores that Friday morning and I mean, t- t- the fact that two of the biggest retailers in the country are not going to be doing it just indicates where we're going to see. Like, if it's not happening over here, it's bubbling up somewhere else. Right, Jimmy? So I was thinking back in, like, 2013, and one of the things I started to think about was, you know, I owned an e-commerce store plus a retail storefront. And, you know, in the business, typically, the, the way that I we always thought about was, there was retail income that you're going to earn through the holiday, and then there was e-commerce income, and they were very separated. Black Friday through uh, through uh, the weekend, and then we went right over into Cyber Monday, and then kicked it off on the online store for the next couple of days. And I look back at 2013, and again, there's two things that really stood out back in 2013 about the retail side that was really important that I don't know is going to happen online anymore because I think. Real estate and stuff is very different. So just imagine this, right? We're going in there. and we're, what The number one thing is we want to find the best deals that we can have. And really, the best deals that we have are the deals on products that haven't moved. And that's really what was happening, right? Like things that we had overstock, one-offs on, weird things that we didn't really truly couldn't sell anymore or wasn't selling. We throw them in the front of the store and like really put them in front of their face, like $3 shirts and $5 pairs of pants and whatever it was, right? And I think what's interesting is like the mentality of someone coming in on Black Friday was very much on not on the internet, but on the, in the store was I need the best bargain deals for the best deal to get someone a gift usually that I think is really cool, right? And so that changes something that's really important because when you go onto a website, well, 
Real estate is very different. It's not like you're walking into a store and you can draw your eyes left and right. It doesn't mean that you can go into that store and like get curated down that path, that customer experience that you want to drive where your newest stuff is always in the back. And then, you know, the, the cheaper, the overstock stuff, the things that are in sale are sitting in the front of the store as we're kind of like paying, you know, getting people to. Uh, I couldn't oh. hear what you said. Sorry. <laughs> that was that was Siri telling me as well too. Anyway, sorry about that. I just dropped my uh, headset and everything here today. So uh, anyway, so you know we had that curated experience happen. But when you're on a website, right? First things first. Your first front page, that main hero message, everything that shows up in that front page is your most valuable real estate. And that is a big decision you're going to have to make. And I think there's a lot of things that people should be thinking about because now what you're, we're going to be changing, and I'm not saying that retail is going to completely die. Retail will always live on, just like books will always live on. 20% of the world still wants books. I personally still love books. I, I'll buy the audio book with it, but I love the book part because I want to own it, right? And I think the same thing is going to happen with re, uh, retail e-commerce is like, you know, the one place that really helped us there was like, when we looked at retail, it was going to be where we got rid of all the overstock and the things that we needed to blow out and get rid of and I'd get the physical money back into the store. And then the online, believe it or not, the way we always operated, at least back in 2013 and looking all the way to 2017, was we would sell the new stuff online with no discount, believe it or not, a lot of times. We'd put them out there and we'd release things on Monday, right? And then we'd throw sales out and we'd take all the overstock and stuff. But if you looked at our income, be back on the back in the day 2013 in the retail side it was all around those clearance items the really cheap stuff a lot of a lot of units right so they'd buy 10 shirts 20 shirts for three dollars a pop but on the online side people were just buying to buy because they were hyped up and amped up because now the weekend is over the online for them i feel like was much more the i want the new stuff i want stuff for myself i want to get a deal and that's basically what people started to change right and now fast forward into where we are today. And I looked over the years and we saw the decline happening. 2013, we'd have a line wrapped around the block for Black Friday. Then in 2014, it was still wrapped around. 2015, 2016, 2017, it was smaller and smaller and smaller already. So, you know, what, what that's telling me was the data was already there and Target and Walmart already knew. They already seen that data and they already kind of understood that data as it was already. And they're starting to realize like, well, you know, that, that, that ship has kind of come and sailed, right? And that's, that's kind of the biggest thing that I kind of take away from what that Target and Walmart article was really about is the fact that they're now saying opening Thursday is not going to be profitable. Opening Friday, they might not open at 4 a.m. or 6 a.m. anymore. They might wait till normal store hours because ultimately it's not profitable. When I look back at 2017, even well, in a store, I mean, God, we had 10 people out in line on 2017 and we were just like, baffled. But what happened in 2017 was our online store took off at that time, right? And we had curated that on an online store because we said back then people were talking about it. So looking into that and what I've started to think about a lot in my head was, well, how is things going to change? How are How is the world going to change? How are the buying habits changing? I think these last four or five months, I mean, it depends on where in the world you're listening to this, but everybody went through some type of lockdown and they say that it takes 21 days to build a habit. And I think the habit has been built now. The word, the buying habits have been changed. And now it's more crucial than ever that you've got great curated stores, got great curated environment, and you need to know what you need to push because you're going to sell what you're pushing. So upsell apps or you know, add to cart, extra things that you need to do. Communication, making sure that communication is thing, you know, you're going to have to build that event up because you no longer have the word of mouth or retail coming through, right? So there's so many places that I think are going to change physically, but I think the online world should be really excited because I think the holiday season is just going to open up more. I think that it's going to start. Come on. We all know everyone's going to push things earlier and earlier, right? Don't be shocked to see a holiday sale or a Black Friday sale two weeks ahead of Thanksgiving. I don't think that's going to matter anymore. What I do kind of think, guys, think it's going to be really cool is that Thanksgiving is going to be Thanksgiving, for example, in the United States now for everybody. It's not going to be a day to go shopping anymore. And maybe, maybe they'll start dropping online sales, but those sales will have already been happening already earlier in the, in the, in the week as well too. And because there isn't that outreach, unless you're using email marketing for your existing customers, but there isn't that big of an outreach like you normally get with like people walking by your storefront it, when they're looking for sales. I think curating everything is going to be just so absolutely important 
in every aspect that you can do as well too. So I didn't want to go into a big tangent there, but you know, there's a lot of things to unpack there, but it's just my story, I guess, thinking back in 2013 and watching that evolution happen in e-commerce and in retail already, seeing it already happen and then hyper accelerating it. I think it was going to die anyways. We just killed it five years earlier than it was going to die. That's my, yeah. my honest answer and what I think about. Yeah. No, I think that totally, I think that was really valuable because you're seeing that from a both retail and e-com perspective, have, since you have that storefront. Because for myself as a consumer, I definitely have seen things evolve over the years because I remember a few years ago, it was like the thing to do was go to the mall at midnight, take advantage of all the sales for Black Friday. And it was like an event. And then that kind of evolved. I mean, I know some people still have held that tradition, but at least for my family, that died out entirely. Once online shopping became so much more convenient and natural, it was just like, why would I go stand in this crowded line? Especially now, because people are, have health concerns with coronavirus going on. There's just less and less of an, a desire to inconvenience ourselves. That's like the huge selling point of online shopping is that it shows up at your door. And interestingly enough, I've noticed Target specifically. I always can bring a consumer standpoint to these podcasts because I do a lot of online shopping. But I've definitely seen Target really up their game in terms of shipping. I've definitely seen them improve because I've always ordered online from Target. But a lot of times... I wouldn't because it just took too long and we're impatient. Now it will tell me, you know, something will be here in five days. And I've had things show up like the next day or in 48 hours. So I've even seen them up their online game and they've had a lot less actually in stock in store, which yeah. has been really interesting. I mean, they have to, right? That they Amazon sets the standard. If you don't meet the standard, you're just not going to be competitive, competitive enough. That's why, and it's not just you know big retailers. You, you, two day shipping is becoming standard even within the Shopify space. You know, with some of the f uh, fulfillment guys out there. But you know, I, w I wanted to just mention one thing off of what Jimmy said because it's such an opportunity. If you're an e-commerce store. One of the biggest mistakes I think you could make is you wait until Black Friday or you wait until Cyber Monday to start rolling out sales. There is no inflection point anymore, which is to Jimmy's point, it is completely open game. If you come in early and you nurture existing users early, that's where you're going to win. You're going to lose if you wait and say, I'm going to do ad spend on Black Friday on Facebook. Good luck getting mm -hmm. your impressions, you know? Yeah. Yep. Uh, well, especially because people do start their holiday shopping as early as like late September. Like yeah. I am one of those early bird people because things get sold out and I just like to be a planner. So like you said, there's not really any reason to wait. Like it is a huge spending season. But I was interesting as looking up some like recent statistics around COVID-19 and e-commerce. And one of the things that it said was um, uh, consumers were surveyed and said that they plan to say, spend the same amount they did last year on holiday gifts, if not more. Um, and they expect to order higher volumes online. So we kind of already knew that, but I thought that that was interesting because I think we know that it's had an effect on the economy, but it doesn't really seem to have had an effect on spending. If anything, right. it's increased our spending because everything is online. Well, it's because people aren't spending anywhere else, right? I got to remember yeah. that. We're not spending on gas anymore. We're not spending on the food that we probably ate out for lunch or dinners that we went out to normally you're eating at home. So you actually have more money. A lot of people are out there boasting about how, you know, I'm saving so much money working remote, so many hours doing this and car and wear and tear. And I think that's just all part of that change, the, the change yeah. of having more things come to you instead of you going out to the other world. And what you guys said about stock, I think that's even more interesting because let's face it. Okay, let's look at Target and Walmart, right? I think it's important to look at them because everybody should be learning from them because they've got really big, expensive people that analyze data all day long. 
and they're seeing the trends. They're seeing the numbers. They're not making these decisions at a whim. No one closes a day, an entire day of a store on one of the biggest days back in the day because they don't see the data, right? So they're seeing that data. Stores aren't stocking, you said, Caitlin, and you're perfect on explain that. It's like stores aren't stocking things. There's a reason for all this. There's big data behind there, and they're telling us that. So, you know, everything big companies do is actually slower than the startup so or the smaller e-commerce. So if you're not making the shift now, and what Amir said, if you're not even thinking about it right now, it'd be absolutely crazy. You should be planning. You should make making the event. You should be making your marketing, getting ready for it. You should get your customers hyped up for it. You got to work out so much planning. I mean, one of the things I talk about always is like event planning. Like you are event planning for like a webinar or you're event planning for like a big giant event event that needs to happen. And the only way you're going to kind of create that is by really planning it and thinking like them. Because I guarantee you Target and Walmart, they've already got their assets ready. They already know what's on sale already. They already got everything together. And you've got to be thinking about that. Obviously, being a smaller company, a lot of times it's easier to be more nimble around that and making those decisions. But usually if a big store is doing it, like you're already behind the ball if you're not thinking this way as well, too. Yeah, I mean, you you know, you made you said with your store, you guys had your your Black Friday sale, which ultimately pushed the Monday sale because people were hot on the sales. Then they would go and buy the new things from the site, right? Yeah. So you don't need that inflection point. You can sell two weeks before, three weeks before. You can start asking your customers that exist, hey, come back and get that Black Friday deal today. today. I mean, call it right. you know, call it Black Friday in September. Call it, mm-hmm. call it, you know, Black Friday in October, whatever. But but start thinking that, hey, people are going to start thinking about their holiday shopping probably sooner than before. Um, they're going to start spending money on these new products sooner than. And by the way, the field is leveled, right? Because Black Friday traditionally supports retailers. And if you're an e-commerce business and you're a direct to consumer brand, guess what? You don't have a store. You don't have foot traffic. You don't have that interaction. But in this shopping, this round, the playing field is way more level. Yep. So Absolutely. No, I think so. And I mean, even Amazon and everybody's going to see that uptick as well, too. Because as you said, no. it's not about the deals a lot of times. It's about the spending or the fact that they're going to be buying things for people and you know, all that stuff. I talked about that at the store. We used to say Friday was all about units and then money and revenue came on a Monday. And that's kind of how way we always operated that store because we saw that we'd send a crap load of units during uh, Black Friday, but it didn't amount to much. And a lot of times it amounts to just getting rid of a lot of inventory because that's what people need because that's what you do when you have these things. And I think that's going to be the really interesting part is like, Back then, it used to be like, all right, we used to put all these boxes up here because those are Black Friday boxes because we're not selling them on the store. Nobody wants them. We discounted it to $10 and nobody wants it. And that's at cost or just a couple bucks under cost. And then Black Friday rolls around and we're selling them for $5 each, right? We're losing money on those deals, but we're doing it to get our cash flow back into the system. And I think that's going to be one of the interesting things. I'm not sure how companies are going to overcome. How do you display your overstock and how do you get in front of people? Because it was very often we'd have one triple XL pair of uh, pants, sweatpants and one extra small t-shirt of some variety. And people, we just couldn't sell it because you'd have to find the right person. Well, guess what? When a person comes shopping, they've got to shop for 20, 30 people. They're no longer shopping for themselves anymore. So they look at that extra small shirt and think that is really cool. Even though if Caitlin was on an edge, she'd be like, what the hell is this, right? It's not really a gift that I'd want, but it's not about that. It's about the thought that counts, right? I don't know how that works. All those sales are final too. And that was the crazy part is like when we did that, we'd say all sales are final because we're deeply discounting it. Well, now online changes that. And I'm actually not sure what the return policy is going to look like and as well too. I think that's going to be a a big cluster of different things that are going to come behind that as well too. Well, coming back, I'm going to chime in from my shopper standpoint over here (laughs) because I'm doing a lot of online shopping. Um, return policies are interesting. I've actually also observed those return policies changing. So Wayfair, for example, huge online furniture giant. Um, I ordered something from them recently and previously it was free returns on a certain dollar amount. Now everything you're being charged the full shipping price. So I just returned something that I paid $160 for and I wasn't happy with it, really didn't want it, but it just wasn't my preference. There was no flaw with the product, 
but I sent it back and I paid 30 bucks for shipping. So it just deducted it out of my refund. But I was like, at the end of the day, like I'll take $130 over keeping something that I don't want and just pay the $30 to spend it or send it back. So that was interesting, which makes me feel like they've definitely seen an increase in orders and maybe they can't afford to keep up with a lot of those free returns anymore. <laughs> there are, there is going to be some chaos. <laughs> There's like Jimmy was saying sites are going to go down or you know like you know, products aren't going to get delivered on time. Like get ready for some chaos because you're not going to be ready, I think. Most people are not going to be I think fully appreciative maybe they are maybe they are of how much different the world is for e-commerce than six months ago you know mm -hmm. i think i, I read a, a statistic from um goldman sachs who've like really upgraded uh their outlook on shopify something like uh, retail penetration from 15 to 27 percent within six months it's insane so yeah Hyper acceleration. I think the world is just hyper accelerated and changed the behaviors and everything at the end of the day. I, I think it's just interesting. I, I think it's really interesting as you just kind of look at it. And I, I don't think anybody doesn't get this. You know what I mean? Like anyone from the outside can see this happening. And if you're living in the world that retail is going to continue to exist, I think, yeah, it's going to exist, but your market is going to be online a lot. of I mean, again, it depends, right? It all depends on your demographic as well too, and how you're cur curating there. But I think this is where everything is changing and all the strategy and planning what you said and then on top of that even like shipping logistics refunds like that's a whole other side of things that you got to think on more boxes that you need more shipping labels that you need more postage that you're gonna have to pay for figuring out how to box all these things i mean god i, I think back at like cyber mondays and we'd have to package six to eight hundred packages and it would take us an entire week to just package imagine what that would feel like if you tripled that volume or doubled that volume and spread it over six uh, six weeks i mean god i don't know i mean the good news yeah. is I know, uh, you know, unemployment, you know, is, you know, it's coming down, but it's still high. Right. So the good news is there'll be a lot of seasonal temp jobs coming up here in the uh, holiday season. Totally. So, yeah, it's interesting. Like what you just mentioned and going back to big retailers like Target and Walmart, they're also going to have to deal with this mass influx in online orders which like you said, they're already prepping for and they're huge companies. Like things are going to be more costly for them in terms of shipping expenses and figuring out return policies and just all the logistics going on. And in a lot of ways, like those retailers are probably haven't been as prepared for that in the past. So it's something that they have to think about now, like you said. So if you're a smaller business, you can take advantage of that because you definitely don't have the logistical headache that Target has. But that doesn't mean that they're not going to figure it out. Because like you said, they will. They've got a lot of smart people working for them. Yeah. yeah. And, and the second part to that that I was thinking about as well, too, was just like, what, uh, you know, what's the best way to put this? Um, what, how, how are gonna, people going to think about inventory, for example, right? Like inventory is going to be a problem too, I think, because things are going to sell out. And then how do you get them to go look at something else, right? When you're in a physical store, oh, that's not there. Let me go walk over here. How do you create that experience and so forth? And then secondly, how do you keep your inventory together? Uh, it was very often even our place, and we have a great inventory, 5,000 square foot. We had racks, tags, all that stuff. Still, things happen. We're missing items. I mean, I can't imagine... How many people aren't going to get their items this year? They'll be like, I bought all my Christmas and Caitlin bought all my Christmas gifts. I'm really excited, ready to go. And then a week later, I'm sorry, but the product was out of stock. Here's a refund, right? What does that do for a consumer? Now, suddenly you've ch changed and put that person in a different spectrum again as well, too. So, I mean, I think this is just coming to digital marketing, digital experience, uh, digital mm -hmm. everything is what, what this comes down to. And really like, no longer is it a retail retail world, it's a e-commerce world, and that's where the future is heading. And I think everyone's gonna go full steam into it. I think this year is gonna be really interesting. It's gonna be really bad. Online stores crashing, websites crashing, stock issues happening, payments portals crashing. Uh, everything is gonna crash this year. And it's gonna be pretty crazy. I think 2020 is gonna be the year that we all look back and was like, what the hell happened that holiday? What the hell happened the entire year? But even that holiday, like what the hell happened that holiday? Totally. Like, that was an absolute mess. Well, I think Especially if you're in, back. 
with uh, hold on one second. Last thing, sure. especially with the fact that most companies, and I know even my co- my company back then was as well. We relied like thirty to forty percent of our income on the holidays, and I'm not sure that's going to happen the same way this year. I think it's going to be spread out like this instead of being narrowed and focused because we usually people go to their brands they love, and now. Well, you can open seven tabs on the computer. I don't need to shop in my favorite brand. I can go look at their my competitors. I can go look at everybody mm-hmm. having sales. So buying decisions will lengthen a little bit and impulse may not be there as much anymore either. Yeah, totally. So. I mean, and to that point, it's a huge if you're if you're a new brand, you need to manage those those if you're running out of stock, you need to be communicating with your your user. You know how it's so difficult to get a, a new customer, right? So uh, having someone come in experience your brand for the first time, decide to buy something from you. That is so valuable, especially at a time like this, because if they have a good experience, if you manage their expectations well enough, if you're sending those emails to say, hey, your product hasn't shipped yet, but it, you know it's going to ship, you, know, you, you handle that customer, that might be a customer that stays with you for life, that you can continue continually nurture lifetime value. So I think, you know, it's a level playing field. This is your t- chance to shine. If you're a Shopify store, a WooCommerce store, a Miva store, whatever you're doing, this is your chance to get those clients in and hold on to them. So really, you know, make sure that you're set up to manage the influx because you don't want to have a bad reputation at the end of it. They never come back to you. Yeah, and to that point too, Amir, um, just the focus on you know, that customer experience. I think communication is huge right now, making sure that you're updating your customer on what's going on, like their order confirmation, their shipping status, their delivery notification. Like I check those constantly. Like I constantly look in my inbox because things are so delayed from so many online stores that I appreciate getting an email saying it's going to be delayed. And I'm sure that might be a little bit complex to work out. But like you said, getting things prepped early helps with that because then it chills me out as a consumer. I'm not over here tapping my fingers, freaking out about where my order is if I know that it's delayed. Even Amazon is doing that. Like I just ordered some, I probably sound like a crazy shopping girl, whatever, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Jimmy, yes, yes, you do. Yes. It's okay. What my husband doesn't know won't hurt him. Um, no, even on Amazon, <laughs> uh, I was supposed to get something yesterday and I got a notification saying it was delayed by 48 hours. So that's nice. I mean, it is nice. Like it, and then I'm not frustrated. And that's the sad part is we now have evolved into these impatient consumers because it's two day shipping. And I'm mad now that it hasn't come on the second day because maybe I had it in my head that I wanted that specific item for a reason for that day. But if you update me and tell me it's delayed, it's leveled me out. And I actually appreciate the brand a little bit more for being communicative. But that also means you have to have those like triggered automation systems in place for communication. Totally. And like it's it's not it's not unfair of you to say that. That's the expectation. They set the expectation. They're the ones that say two days shipping, right? Actually I have an interesting story. I won't name the brand because I I won't I don't want to do that. But uh, my wife ordered a product. It's an American Why, made but product. I want to know. It's now trendy. I want to know. They're skates. I'll say they're skates. I'm not going to say the brand, but uh, yeah, they're skates. And anyway, okay. so <laughs> it's so so they have a delay in the, in their in their ability to actually get the products out, right? And so for months they haven't actually been communicating. Um, and what they did is they sent out an email with a literal list of every order that they have to fulfill <laughs> and saying to their customers, "Hey, in, in you know." In the spirit of transparency, here is literally the, you know, large number of orders. And again, if I probably say it, I don't want to identify the company. Here's the large number of orders that we have yet to fulfill. You can find your order in this list and then it will have a date next to it uh, uh, when we think we'll get it out to you. 
you could that same company which again they have plenty of money and they have plenty of sophistication and honestly knowing what we know about a system like Sendlane, you don't need to be a team of 20 to do these things. You could have simply automated that email, have those people just get the end of it, not have to go look through a spreadsheet you sent us uh, to look for our order. Like that really damages, no matter how good your product is, you're damaging your brand because a brand is more than just what you're selling, you know? Yeah. Um, and it did. I mean, we don't want to buy. We don't want the product. We want to cancel it, yeah. right? So um, anyway. Well, like, yeah, like you said, we also have a certain expectation now because of the way that we shop and the way that brands communicate with us. So I feel like it is an immediate turnoff with a brand if they feel like they're way behind the times. Like if I'm getting, I even ordered something um, from some random company I've never heard of, but I wanted the product. I ordered it. I have no idea where it's being shipped from, but I'm getting the jankiest email notifications I've ever seen. And I come to find out it is a legit store. Like it's real. The item is coming, but it's so just outdated looking. It had me questioning if I should have even bought that and maybe I should just cancel it. So if anything, I can just tell they're running on a really outdated email system and everything is just formatted old, kind of like what you said. I don't have a picture of my product. It's like an item number. And then mm -hmm. it doesn't it didn't even list the product name. And maybe it's because of the industry that I work in that I'm specifically triggered. <laughs> but either way, that was kind of pathetic because of the technology that we have like you have to evolve with what's available to you yeah it's no longer about saying hi when they open come into your store cashing them out on the register and thanking them for their business it's actually customer experience now what you just said it's not just this we just added a whole layer of experience that a customer needs to kind of experience to be happy so it's not about just walking online to the website, finding the product, adding and buying it. It's what happens afterwards and how do you communicate and work with them as well too. And I think that's what we're kind of pinpointing on is like the digital world is here. I know that we've been talking about for 20 years, probably 30 years in the world, but I think at what, what really is coming out is, hey, it's here now. What are we gonna do about it? How are we gonna go fight it? How are we gonna go uh, attack this? And again, you know, whenever you listen to this podcast, if it's in September or August or whenever you're listening to it, like if you're not already thinking about it, whenever I'm saying this, if you haven't already started planning this and really working on the idea and structure behind it on Black Friday for your holiday, like you're probably already behind because it's not just about your digital marketing effort, but that's how you get people in the door and how you get people to stick and experience. But now you've got to think about all the other things that come into it, including logistics. I think that's something that we don't even think about. Like think about the logistics of what will happen to UPS or a FedEx or USPS and geez, the volume quadruples, let's just say four X's, let's just say. And I think that's a fair guesstimate of what might happen in this holiday season. I remember last year, we were already having massive shipping delays last year. Like, I can't imagine what the hell the shipping de the, the delays are going to look like this year. Like, you better buckle up and early or often, early order off early enough that you're going to fill that bucket. But the problem again that comes into place is, again, the same problem, right? Well, are you going to get the time? Are you going to have the stock? All that good stuff that comes into place. And who knows? I mean, until we get through it, I don't think anyone can truly forecast it, but you've got to lean on the big companies because they've got the guys they are doing data crunching and they see something we don't see right now and they know what's going to happen. And they're generally right. They're not this big of a company and they're not a couple billion, maybe trillion dollars of business there if they weren't right about this kind of stuff. 100%. Yep. Yeah. And they've got yeah. it figured out as far as automation goes and communication. Oh, yeah. Like, those big brands like Target and Wayfair specifically, just since we've been talking about them, their email marketing is so streamlined. Like they yeah. totally have that figured out. So like you said, look at the big brands. They're doing it right. Yes, they've got a lot of resources, but also just touching back on Sendlane again, it is that set it and forget it mindset. Invest the time now, get it set up, and then you don't even need to think about it other than jumping in to update things, adding new products, whatever it might be. It's a lot of work up front, but down the road, it makes things so much easier. Yeah. Yep. 
I mean, they also set that expectation, by the way, because they handle their emails so well, because they let you know when they're st- when they haven't they have had delays, all of those things, just like the two day shipping, the standard has been set now. So if you're just sending out newsletters, you're not meeting the expectation of your users. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that's going to yeah. be a problem long term, you know. It makes total yeah. sense. I think I think it's interesting. I mean, there's a lot to think about. I think there even through the series we talk about, I think we should start thinking about other things that we could help with, you know, the people listening to this podcast, things that they can think about or things that they should be thinking about or doing actionable things that will help them as well too. And that could be a future podcast where we all come up with a couple actionable items that uh, e-commerce or slash retailer store should be doing right now as they continue to think about the world and the future here. Because unfortunately, everyone's predicting with, well, there's a lot of things going on this year. They got COVID, got an election going on right now, uh, which you don't even hear about that much because of COVID. And then there's the holidays that are coming up. And then just you add those and compound them all together. And I think it's just going to be a big show. And uh, <laughs> I'm not really sure what to expect. There's no yeah, doubt about that. I have no idea what's going to happen. I can't wait. The internet's going to explode. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. I mean, uh, every year we've seen email volume do this this year. I can't even imagine what email volume is going to look like this year. We're already trying to ramp up and get our even ourselves prepared to make sure we're supporting our merchants, right? And the only way we're going to do it is by making sure that we're stable and and have good safety. We're putting pauses on any kind of launches and products and got to do all our stuff on our side. And you guys, you know, everybody listening to this, if you're doing e-commerce, like you got to be doing the same thing. And don't think about just to make the sale, guys. Think about everything end to end all the way down to the customer experience of that communication, how your boxes are going to look, how you're going to package your boxes, how you're going to ship your boxes. I mean, there's so much to that. And then, then it's an inventory problem too. Like how do you go get 10,000 items out of your store as opposed to normally you would have 500 items go out of your store, right? Like how do you mm-hmm. increase that logistics, the people element as well too? God, I don't even know what that to begin. And all I think it's going to be is just a giant fire cluster, just a giant mess. So I think there's a lot of good things and hopefully we can kind of go through the series together and just kind of give different things that we can teach people on. And I think that's going to be really important because people, if you can hear it and you can hear what we're talking about here and hopefully we can apply and give you guys something that you're going to add one little thing to make a world of difference, especially with that. And uh, I think that's going to be really interesting too. Totally. Yeah, I agree. Um, And I'm glad you mentioned that because this, this episode is, a little bit more just chatting about the current environment, things that are going on. We mentioned a little bit about what you can do to prepare, but as we go through this series, we'll definitely make sure that we're very solution oriented so that if you're listening to this, you have actionable things you can take away from this and apply to what you're doing to make sure that you're set up for success throughout the rest of this year and moving forward into 2021, because who knows what we'll expect next year. So um yeah well thanks guys i'm glad that you both could take the time out of your busy day at home (laughs) to jump on this podcast uh we'll be back again but thanks so much for joining us for this episode of the marketing automation hustle like we said we'll be continuing our conversation on covid and its effect on e-commerce and actionable tips for you over the next few weeks so make sure that you're notified about our new episodes and of course Show us a little bit of love by hitting that subscribe wherever you stream your podcasts. And as always, if you want to start playing around with automation, like we kind of mentioned, you can do that with Sendlane. There's so much for you to explore within our platform. You can take advantage of our 14-day free trial and get full access to the platform as well as 24-7-365 outstanding customer support. So we highly recommend you do that at Sendlane.com. Again, that's a 14-day free trial. And that's a wrap. So we will catch you next time on the next episode of the Marketing Automation Hustle.